conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. The order which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature any public comment. For this meeting, the Beale Building Committee is convening by Google Meets and is posted in the town's website identifying how the public may join. As a preliminary uh, matter, uh, my name is James Kane. I'm chairman of the Building Committee. Please permit me to confirm that all members and persons participated, anticipated in participating in the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Erin Boucher? Aye. Keith Baldinger? Aye. Bob Cox will not be with us this evening. Patrick Collins? Aye. Christopher Girardi? Aye. Kevin Mizikar? Present. Joseph Sawyer? Here. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Valerie Clemmy? Present. Anticipated speakers on the agenda, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Deb Share. Here. Walter Hartley. Here. John Brennan. Here. Katie Crockett. Present. David Fontaine, Jr. Present. Frank Payer. Here. Peter Reynolds. I, I don't believe that is Peter Reynolds on the um, unknown. I believe that's Kevin Smith from PMA. Okay. Um, we're now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, please permit me to cover some ground rules. I'll introduce each board member or staff member who is the lead role in the particular item or guest speaker associated with this item in the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of the members first and then to the staff members inviting each by name to provide any comment or questions. I will then call upon the members to offer a motion. And then for a second, please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute or unmute your phone by pressing star six or mute your computer when you're not speaking as to not trigger your camera feed and background noise. As has been our practice, I will ask that the motion be made by Sandy Fritz, whose name was not on the original roll call. I apologize, Sandy. No worries. And then I'd like to ask Erin to second them just for uh, order and clarity. So the first item uh, for this evening is to review and take action on the October 27, 2020 meeting minutes. So I have a, any comments or questions? If not, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those uh, members uh, will vote in the affirmative as we run the roll call. Sandy Fritz? Aye. Erin Boucher? Aye. Keith Baldinger? Aye. Patrick Collins? Aye. Christopher Girardi. Aye. Kevin Mizica. Aye. Joseph Sawyer. Aye. And I'm in the affirmative. Item three is the project financial documentation review. We will review and act on the following bill schedules and warrants regarding the vendor expense item and the amount. Fontaine Brothers Inc. requisition number 21 for $2,723,148. LPA Inc. Invoice 1717-2010 in the amount of $69,545. PMA Consultants LLC Invoice 04110-41, $62,414.83. And App Geo Invoice 21584 for $7,835. Town of Shrewsbury Public Buildings. 730015 $1,875. Are there any comments or questions from the committee? Not seeing or hearing any. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Ms. Fritz? Aye. Ms. Boucher? Aye. Mr. Baldinger? Aye. Mr. Collins? Aye. Mr. Girardi? Aye. Mr. Mizuka? Aye. Mr. Sawyer? Aye. And I'm an aye. Number four, to hear reports, review, and act on the following matters. A report from the owner's project manager regarding the overall project and project financials. 
All right, this is, yep. this is Deb Shear. I'm just going to run through the uh, budget summary as we normally do. It was sent out to Val with the revised agenda. Um, right. Architect's contract value remains as it was last month, 7,310,631. OPM's contract remains the same as last month, 2,875,085. Um, construction manager's contract, we added um, change order number four. 1754, which we approved at last month's meeting. So their total uh, contract value is 72,688,598. So total contract values to date, 82,874,314. Total invoices through October, 49,255,933, which leaves us a balance to finish of 42,746,226, which gets us to the $92 million that uh, is included in the executed PFA. Um, encumbered to date, $83,992,000, the uh, builder's risk, the cost of land, miscellaneous invoices. So we have uh, just over $8 million remaining uh, in the project budget related to encumbered. And um, we have no pending reimbursements. They've all been paid in the Reimbursement to the town of Shrewsbury to date is 16,393,532 based on a total value submitted of 43,994,039. Any That's the budget summary. Thank you very much. Any comments or questions from members of the committee? Not hearing or seeing any. Walter, anything from your side? Uh, no, just a quick update. We had... Um... Deb and Kevin uh, were putting together the 50% DCAM reviews. We did pass that threshold uh, at um, our last uh, requisition. Uh, so um, in accordance with the MSBA, we will complete those. Uh, we will not be submitting them to DCAM. We're just gonna submit them to the MSBA. Um, and we'll work with Fontaine to make sure that those get over to the subcontractors as well. So everyone's doing good and um, we'll, they'll be uh, looking to complete the project strong so that they have a good DCAM at the end as well. Uh, could you refresh my memory as to the role of DCAM? On this job? Uh, yes. no, nothing that I know of other than we follow a lot of their forms per the MSBA guidelines. Okay. Uh, that's about it. Okay, I took your comment to, head, to indicate they had a role I was unaware of. No, MSBA just asks us to use their uh, standard form for contractor evaluations. All right, thank you very much. If there aren't any other questions regarding the owner's project manager, I'll move to 4B, report from the architect. Good evening. Um, just to kind of continue to um, build on what Deb was saying as far as the financials go. Uh, if you look at the requisition for last month, we were billing at about 58% of the project. Uh, so we're, we're getting pretty close to being, you know, well done with the exterior of the building and, and moving right on into interior finishes. Um, in addition to that, uh, speaking of interior finishes, we have put out all the specifications and bids for all the FF&E uh, furniture, which is the lion's share of the FF&E budget. Uh, we are participating in the state's collaborative purchasing um, program that they've started this past year. Uh, it just allows us to stretch that allotment that you get per student a lot further, get you guys a better bang for your buck and some greater savings on, on the items you're looking to procure. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you are all aware not only of uh, what we're going to speak about in a moment, the mural that we have going on in the school, but we also have a history wall um, that has outside participation. And I'm happy to report that we have six high school students that are helping uh, pull together historical information along with the school committee member, uh, Mr. Dale McGee, is also helping spearhead that effort. I uh, want to thank him very much for stepping up and also want to kind of report that LPA has offered to uh, donate our services in pulling together all of the materials that they come up with for a final graphic product to be printed on the panels and that are going to be hung in the lobby um, on the right hand side next to the gymnasium. Um, part of that also, we are moving and relocating the bar relief. That's an existing 
uh, vestibule of Beale um, Elementary. Many of you might be aware that it's a World War Memorial, along with the original dedication plaque will also be mounted on a wall adjacent to that. Uh, and with that, I will let Katie take it from here. Thank you, guys. Uh, one, one question, Sean. Yeah. Do you have a sense as to a timeline as uh, when we will get a presentation of that work? The Being history led by Dr. McGee. Um, I believe Katie, do, do you recall the deadline we set for that? I don't have it at the top. They're, they're, um, they're just gathering the material right now. So it will likely be a, a solid couple of months before we'll be able to have something to present to the building committee. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. And Katie? Sean is going to, um, share the screen now. And he's our driver, so. <laughs> um, tonight, we're, we're very pleased to have uh, Peter Reynolds and his studio manager, Julia, with us um, to present the progress to date on the mural. Um, uh, just a quick reminder that <coughs> the original vision for this mural was to develop a, an uplifting feeling as the community and as students enter the building. Additionally, there was a lot of discussion about the interest in historic connections to the existing Beale in the community. And the original mural that Peter Reynolds did that we're reproducing and incorporate into the design will be also a part of this presentation tonight. Um, Peter, for those of you who aren't aware, is an internationally recognized author and artist. And we're very excited about his presentation of what he and his studio have been working on. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Uh, Good evening. Yeah. Welcome, Peter. Thank you, Mr. Kane and the, the committee. Um, thanks for dedicating. Uh, an evening of the holiday week to to all the hard work that you're doing in Shrewsbury. Um, I had the uh, fortune of connecting the dots with Shrewsbury about 20 years ago. Um, can you hear me okay? I just want to double check. Yes, I can. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I started my uh, career in educational software, actually, and then it turned into uh, into books when I had a daughter, Sarah, who's now uh, 33. Uh, but when she was a little girl, I would create stories for her. And I started writing them down. And one thing led to another, and I became a children's book author and illustrator. And schools started asking me to come visit. And I was invited uh, to Shrewsbury. And I was trying to calculate how many years ago it was. And I'm thinking it's close to 20. It could be even 20 years ago. Uh, and I painted a mural in the hallway. And I remember, uh, you know, I had all my cans of paint out in the hallway of this lovely old school. And I painted the mural and everyone was happy. And I left and I, can, I voyaged on. And then I got the call uh, this past year. Uh, saying that they would like to uh, incorporate the old mural into the new school. And then one thing led to another. And they asked me, they said, is, you know, would you like to tackle the, uh, the mural for, for the school? And uh, so it's been an honor to tackle this rather large project, I must say. And I love uh, number one, I love that you're building a new school. I applaud all communities who are updating their schools because as much as I love old uh, old schools, which my daughter, Sarah, you know, she had to, you know, power through old school with old infrastructure, new school and new school design is so important as we have understood that uh, the, the way that children learn uh, is... Uh, not just through books, but it's, it's tactile, it's libraries, it's uh, spaces for them to be physical, to move. Um, and also it's important that kids are stimulated visually as well, that, that color and 
and shape uh, really help stimulate the mind. We have the right and the left side of the brain, and we want to stimulate both of those. Um, so my work in the past 25 years has been to inspire everybody to make their mark. And all of my work is dedicated to inspiring kids and, and also grown-up kids, adults too, to, uh, to draw, to write, to express themselves. Because I do think that a democracy relies on people who think, who are active, and who also are optimistic. And that's really the 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 uh, the foundation of the mural that I tackled was to create an experience. When you walk into that building, I wanted I want people to feel as as Katie mentioned, uplifted. I want them to feel joy. Uh, you know, going to school. Uh, in the old days, we used to groan and say, you know, oh, we have to go to school. I want kids to be joyful going to school. I think I, actually after all this remote learning, kids are actually, they're dying to get back into school. And we want to preserve that feeling that school is a wonderful place to be. And it is uh, there to lift you up and that uh, your imagination is the key to take all the stuff you learn because, you know, we we're required to learn a set number of things in school, but we want to inspire kids to say, okay, I know this stuff and I live in this world. How am I going to use my talent, my time, my energy, my creativity to make the world a better place? So I wanted to create an uplifting mural and uh, have it be colorful and diverse and full of joy. So when you walk into that building, you can't help but feel uplifted. So I think through the magic of technology, we're going to actually be able to walk into the school. And um, there it is. How awesome is technology that we can actually see something? In fact, I always tell kids that visioning is the superhuman power of being able to see something before it exists, which is the core of imagination, right? We imagine this school together, the building committee, um, LPA, the community, we imagined walking into school. What, what would this feel like? We're walking into school. I'm in first grade. I'm walk, walking up the steps and there's a door. And what is inside this place? Is it, is it, it's a bit of a mystery, but when we enter, suddenly we're greeted. We're greeted with color. And I have created a, a whole host of children, very diverse children from different backgrounds. And they're all, uh, soaring through the heavens, going amazing places, because that is our wish for people. And we're walking into the into the lobby. We go down the stairs, and here's the big the big mural. And but wait, there's more. <laughs> uh, as we travel through, there's the mural carries through, which I love that it's not just a static mural in one place. That it really is a theme that takes us through the building. We have artists, we have writers, we have scientists, we have athletes, we have architects, we have mathematicians, and each character represents one of you know all the disciplines, including the arts, which of course I'm a big supporter of the arts. And so we walk down the hallway and uh, there are our students and ah, uh, look at this. There's the original mural that inspired it all. <laughs> this is the uh, we're replicating the actual mural that I painted 20 years ago. And so it will be preserved and shared. Uh, but the DNA of that mural is part of everything that I created, except it's huge. <laughs> and uh, in fact, you have to travel through the school to see the whole, the whole mural. And there's someone with a paintbrush and we've got people playing guitars. We've got people writing, people reading, and also, uh, throughout the whole experience, you'll uh, it, there's lots of detail. We have stars, and we have we also have words. I wrote a book called The Word Collector, which uh, President Obama and the First Lady read during the uh, early days of the COVID crisis. Um, they read The Word Collector to eight million people, and I have embedded words throughout the mural, and the. Uh, uh, all of these words is going to take kids probably six years to read, <laughs> uh, to discover all the little treasures in this mural. But we have 
uh, words, which actually I asked the community in Shrewsbury to give me words. Uh, what, what words are powerful? Because I do believe that words are powerful and they can change the world. Words like ability, ambition, art, aspire, balance, bravery, uh, collaboration, communication, community, compassion, cooperation, courage, cre uh, creativity, curiosity, dedication, determination, discovery, diversity, dreams, effervescent, empathy, energy, enlightenment, enthusiasm, equality, excellence, exploration, exuberance, and, and the list goes on, but we have persever perseverance, which I think is probably one of the, the words we all can uh, uh, resonate with. This has been a very, very challenging year. And this school is going to be the beginning of this new, uh, co hopefully COVID-free future where kids feel that they have, they did persevere. They were able to rise above. And I always say that when the, when the going gets tough, the creative get going. And this whole mural is really based on, on creativity, persistence, and also the, the quest to reach for the best version of yourself. I want every kid to see themselves in this mural and say, yeah, that, you know, that's me. I'm the artist, you know, no, I'm, 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 I'm the gardener. I'm the football player. I'm the writer. I'm the dreamer. And I, I'll sort of end on that, that the dream dreaming uh, is really the most important part. If we t teach kids that it's all about memorization, we've missed the point. What we need to do is inspire kids to be dreamers and to be able to see that their future is really up to them. And my favorite book I show kids is a blank book. And kids say, but there's nothing in it. And I say, what, why do you think I love that book so much? And they say, and they start thinking, they're like, oh, because you can put your own ideas, your own words. It could be your story. And I say, yeah, you know, your life is like a blank book and you get to write it. And it's up to you how interesting that story is going to be. And we, as educators and parents, we want your story to be amazing. We want it to be full of color and diversity and creativity, and also uh, a commitment to your community. Because ultimately, you know, we're not in this alone, we're in it together. And so I just wanna say thank you to Shrewsbury for inviting me into the process. And it has been a huge uh, and delightful challenge to create uh, something that will last for, uh, for generations, actually. This school will be here for a long time. And I am delighted to think about that first grader who walks through those doors and is greeted with all this, the color and, and excitement and optimism, and that that will set their compass for the most amazing journey. So um, I'll finish and just say thank you very much for allowing me to share my vision for the mural. And thank you to LPA for um, inviting me to the table and Shrewsbury for inviting me back into your community. And the dots are connected uh, and I can't wait to be there on uh, the ribbon cutting day, whenever that uh, happens to be. So thank you. Thank you, Peter. Any comments or questions from members of the committee? Am I hearing no one? Okay, I, Peter, I, like I will just come. If it's okay. Um, yes, go ahead, go, go ahead, Chris. Um, something that I think is really important is that the Make Your Mark, the current Make Your Mark mural at, at Beale School, although it was done over or around 20 years ago, if you look at it, it really embodies everything that we still stand for today. Mm. So when you talk about longevity and generations in vision, um, it's really something that it looks like it was painted yesterday. And really, the, the I think the, the messaging behind it is just so, so powerful and so current. And I just think it's a, a, a important point to make as we're working with Peter to kind of bring on the new the new building is just how his vision really does carry through, I think, in a, in a timeless way. 
Thank you. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate that. And this mural was the absolutely the the DNA for the larger mural. It was just it, in a way we we dove into the mural and we got to see the rest of the universe there. So um, thank you very much for those comments. Mr. Chairman, can I make a comment as well? Of course, Joe. Go right ahead. Thank you. Uh, uh, Peter, thank you so much for presenting this evening. And uh, I, in terms of how many years ago you were at Beale, it, uh, it sounds about right about 20 years ago. And about that time period as well, I had the pleasure of meeting you uh, when I was the then assistant principal at Floral Street School and you came and did a presentation. Um, a teacher we had named Kathy Rivenberg had invited you to come and uh, I think the class did a little play and, and uh, it was a really excellent collaboration. So I was really pleased uh, when we first were told by LPA that we were going to be able to uh, recreate uh, the, the current mural at Beale in the new school um, and then uh, thrilled with the idea that you were going to be able to contribute and, and uh, take on this, this mural project. So thank you. Um, I, I'm going to be curious. I know people are seeing this for the first time um, and I think there's a lot of that uh, connects the vision to the original mural. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be interested to hear uh, feedback from you know the Beale teacher community, parent community, as well as uh, I'm hoping Mr. Girardi can have some students uh, take a look. Not only the students at Beale, but our, our students in our current upper elementary grades as well, um, to sort of get what their what their reaction is. And I think there's there's lots of things here that do make the connections to the themes and the uh, I know what Mr. Girardi is trying to do to pull together uh, a new school community and and build a, a new school culture and, and climate. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be curious to know in terms of feedback around um, sort of the the color piece and, and, you know, sort of how it connects to the existing mural and, uh, you know, how what, how it strikes people upon walking in and kind of the size. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to think myself in terms of uh, the 3D visioning is really helpful rather than seeing something static um, and trying to imagine what that's going to look like sort of in, in person because that's where it will have the most dramatic effect, of course. So. I look forward to uh, uh, hearing about some of that feedback from the from the school community and the members of the uh, committee here and whoever else. And uh, I know I'm sure, and I'll, I'm, I know that Katie and Sean uh, will be working with you in terms of how we can be sure that it, it fits, uh, you know, architecturally as well as into what the the vision for the community has. But thank you again for uh, uh, presenting this this evening and the work uh, so far. And uh, I'm really excited to see how this evolves. Thank, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, um, I'm, I'm excited too to, <laughs> to be able to walk through and, and see it. Uh, and, but this with technology, it's, I, it kind of took my breath away, frankly, to see it in context with human beings, uh, to see the scale of it. Um, and uh, I know it, it, it uh, of course, I was thinking to myself, what if it wasn't there? What if we just chose, you know, a really nice, uh, you know, gr wood grain or uh, a, uh, some, you know, gray slate or something. Uh, what would it feel like? And I, I, it, it, uh, seeing, seeing it like this, I think if I was a kid, I would be just looking at every single day, trying to, you know, noticing something new and being inspired. You know, the one thing we definitely need more of in this world is color. And um, the, uh, you know, I know, the color does stimulate the brain. And so I'm hoping that we, um, that we achieve that. So I'm looking forward to the reaction, especially from the kids. So thank you very much for your comments. And it's, it's, and thank you for reminding me what the, where the original dot was, the dot connection. Um, Cause Kathy Rivenberg, yeah, that you just triggered. I forgot that actually. So I'm getting old, but <laughs> uh, thank you for reminding me. Further comments or questions from the committee? I'm not hearing any. Peter, I must admit, it, it was a real uh, eye-opening, um, jarring experience for me when I looked at the advanced copy of this. Mm. Uh, I admit I'm the original grumpy old man <laughs> at 56, and I am, and I admit it. But I will tell you, after hearing your uh, explanation this evening, after understanding your reasoning and after hearing many of the words used, I think I'm just about sold. 
Um, <laughs> yes. I, I will yield to uh, the new print or the principal mm -hmm. of the new building and the superintendent and, and uh, how it fits with the school. But I will tell you, I have a much greater appreciation for what is proposed and what is your reasoning behind it um, mm -hmm. at 6.30 than I did earlier this evening. And I greatly appreciate you spending the time. I will say, Joe and Chris, I would, I think it's helpful if we either get a copy of um, this meeting mm -hmm. or, or at least a uh, transcription of the words that Peter has offered as the reasoning behind this, um, his reasoning, what he's hoping to achieve as you work with uh, the equivalent of a focus group. I think it, I think looking at the picture is one thing, looking at the picture and squinting to try to see what words are used are, is another thing, but having the benefit of what he said to us this evening, I think puts this effort in a much greater and more complete context. So I, I would hope that you would be able to uh, take that extra step and make sure people got the full, um, the, the breadth and scope of the reasoning, the point of origin, uh, mm -hmm. of the artist. Uh, it's changed me about 164 <laughs> degrees from where I was last week. So yes. I appreciate your taking the time, Peter, and coming in this evening. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, it's always good to know the story behind the story. And, uh, the, you know, the uh, um, I'm, you know, it's the I'm honored to be a part of the story of this new school. Um, and my book, The Dot, is probably the one that's probably the most known around the world. Um, I just want to mention that the, the International Dot Day is a day that's celebrated September 15th. Um, and the uh, it was started by a teacher in Iowa. And this past year, we had uh, 14, I think, well, actually, I lost track, somewhere around 14 million kids and teachers around the world celebrating in 184 countries. Uh, celebrating the idea of creativity and making your mark. And I just wanted to mention it because the mural, the original mural said, make your mark and see where it takes you. And uh, so the, uh, you know, it's that original introduction to Shrewsbury to that t educator, uh, to Kathy Rivenberg, uh, she really set the, the dominoes uh, knocking forward to get us to this point. And uh, so anyway, I just wanted to mention that, that the, uh, that it's a, it's an honor to be part of, uh, still part of the Shrewsbury story. So good luck. I know you've got a lot of hard work ahead of you and looking forward to opening day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you very um, much. Katie, I do think in whatever final form this takes, just as the original had a few key words that almost set it off, I think uh, certainly we have the size and scope of this proposal. I think some key words from what Peter said this evening would be helpful in helping people understand what was sought uh, to be achieved uh, in, in, as an element of this particular project. Understood, good point. Thank Any you other comments or questions? Any other comments? If not, Peter, thank you so much uh, for your time and thank you, Julia, as well. Yes, good night. Thank you. Yeah, have a great Thank evening. You. Thank you all. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Happy, I know. happy holidays. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay, 4C report from the construction manager, Frank. Uh, David? Yes, sir. Uh, first, before I just talk about the schedule, I just wanted to say that it's these type of things that get us excited. We do a lot of buildings and a lot of brick and mortar, but the stuff that is going on here with the murals and some of the stuff that we did at the library at the at the courtyard that's that's what gets us excited and thank you guys for letting us be a part of it uh, as far as the schedule goes as, as deb said we are on schedule uh continue to work on the outside with masonry metal panels windows that should all be behind us by christmas and we are diligently working on the inside uh, with all the finishes, the ceramic painting, uh, millwork is rolling in, acoustic ceiling tiles, uh, all mechanical disciplines are uh, fully engaged. So it's it's pedal to the metal. Uh, there's a lot more work to get done, and and we're we're poised to do it. Are there any critical path items that are keeping you up at night? 
No, the one thing that was keeping me up at night was the guardrail, and that's coming in next week. Um, it was supposed to be here this week, but with uh, Thanksgiving, they pushed it to next week. So that was the, out of all of the things that could potentially hurt us or be behind, that was the least of what I expected to, to see. And uh, with the pressure-treated lumber market the way that it is, um, it took us a little bit by surprise, but we are getting it next week. And uh, right now everything is on schedule. We sent notices out last week um, after we give Dave Fontaine the uh, credit for that, for kind of bringing to my attention the fact that, you know, we're going to have a, an inauguration come up in January and we're not sure what's going to happen then. And we told all the subs to get all the materials that you have, get them on site. We'll find a home for them. I'd rather, I'd rather move the stuff around and not have it. So we're doing everything in our powers to get what we need so when we need it. Great, thank you. David? I think Frank covered it well, everything. We're happy with how everything's going on site. Good cooperation from, from the whole team and um, we're pushing hard. And there, are there any COVID complications to date that would seem to be a further challenge or just like the rest of us, the unknown? Yeah, it's it's really the unknown, you know, material lead times in the commercial industry as well as, you know, the residential industry, I'm sure many of you have seen are, you know, growing and growing. So we're just trying to, we can't install what we don't have on site. So we're trying the best that we can to procure things and get them on site. Um, you know, even if they wouldn't traditionally be needed right now, we're going to accommodate that and uh, we've got the forces on site to, to move it around as need be and make sure that we're being productive. Right. Further questions, comments? Not hearing any. Thank you very much. So, so our next meeting would be on Tuesday, December 15th at 6, if that works for people. And then we'll go back to the fourth Tuesday of the month, January on. All right, having said that, I don't think there's any other business to come before the committee. I'd accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. Ms. Fritz? Aye. Ms. Boucher? Aye. Mr. Baldinger? Aye. Mr. Collins? Aye. Mr. Girardi? We'll take that as a yes. Mr. Mizikar? <laughs> Aye. Mr. Sawyer? Aye. I'm an aye. Enjoy your Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you very much for your time. See you in Thanks. December. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye, all. Bye. Bye now.